Hi, we're Ariel. And Michelle. And, and we're, we're the, the Board, Board Game, Game Tutors. Tutors. Today, we're doing our Advanced Concepts video, Part 2, for the second summoner, Guild Dwarves, led by their summoner, Bolvi. And so, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, uh, starting with upgrade cards. Okay. So first, we're going to be showing you all the event cards, but specifically, uh, we're going to read this rule card that comes with the basic, uh, not the basic, the uh, second summoner guild dwarf set, which, read up, which reads upgrades on the top of the card. And Michelle's going to read this for us first. So this, this tells the rules. It says rules card on it um, for how upgrades work. And there are only three upgrade cards in the deck. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and start. Some event cards are used to upgrade specific units. When playing an event card that has the word upgrade in its title, place that event card under the unit you wish to upgrade. As long as an upgrade card is under a unit, that unit has the special ability granted by that upgrade. An upgrade cannot be given to a unit that already has an upgrade. Once an upgrade card is placed under a unit, that card follows all of the rules concerning cards underneath a unit card, as described in the terminology clarification section of the rulebook. All right, so basically uh, what upgrade cards mean are, as you can see here on the Bolvi event card list, um, the Expand, that does not have Upgrade in the title. Strength and Structures does not have Upgrade in the title. Neither does Accelerated Construction. Neither does Destabilize. However, Mortar Upgrade, Turret Upgrade, and Colossus Upgrade. Those are the three cards that we were referring to. You only have one copy of each in your entire deck. And basically, these upgrades only apply to towers because they have the built special ability. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see over here... Um, Upgrades can be applied to Assault Towers, which we explained in the previous video, and to Grundor's Tower, because, as you can see, they have Built in their ability name. So, that means Mortar, Turret, and Colossus can only be put on these two types of cards. You'll have several copies of the Assault Tower in your deck, and only one copy of Grundor's Tower, because it is a champion. So, right. you can put those three cards on these two types of cards. And they can only have one upgrade each. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I wanted to put the mortar upgrade on the assault tower, I could not also uh, add on to that the turret upgrade. That would be an illegal move based on the rules specified in this card. So if I wanted to, I could put the mortar upgrade on this assault tower and the turret upgrade on Grundor's tower, but I could never do two upgrades to the same tower. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you could just put all of the upgrades on Grundor's tower and make it a hulking behemoth that kills everything in its path, which they did not want to do, obviously, because then it would just be overpowered. Mm -hmm. So well, that was that. And also, whenever you put an upgrade card, Mortar, Turret, or Colossus, underneath a card, um, if for some reason the card moves, the card underneath it also moves. And also, uh, if the card... If this has an upgrade card underneath it, or if this has an upgrade card underneath it, then if this assault tower is destroyed, then the destroying player gets the assault tower and the upgrade card that is underneath the card as magic for their magic pile. So same for Grundor's tower. Uh, this tower, as well as the upgrade card underneath it, would both go into the opponent's magic pile if they destroyed it. That's right. So... That was everything about upgrades, and let's go ahead and move on to the first upgrade. Okay, so Mortar Upgrade is this one. Mm -hmm. Upgrade a unit with the built special ability with this special ability. Explosive Shell. This unit may attack any card within three spaces. If this attack destroys a card, immediately place one wound marker on each card that was adjacent to the destroyed card. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let us say... Um, do this right here. We're going to put somebody here. Make this. Oh, let's not include him. Let's do this Oath Sworn. So let's pretend the Oath Sworn and this architect are both evil and uh, they're part of the opponent's army. And we got the Mortar upgrade. So this is an event card. So during your event card phase, you would take this card and put it, choose it a tower, and put it underneath it. And as you can see here, um, it has to have the built special ability. And we check that. That is true. It is a tower and it is built. And the explosive shell, 
the unit may attack any card within three spaces. So like we specified with towers before, they are ranged units, just like any archer or any other ranged unit like that. So uh, they have orthogonal three, spa three space orthogonal uh, range. So they can attack one, two, three spaces away to the left, to the right, above and below. So that would be in a straight line. Yeah, in a straight line. However, the mortar upgrade, as the name upgrade implies, it expands the powers of the range of this tower. So instead of just three spaces above, below, left and right, you can now attack any card within three spaces of this card and its upgrade. So mm -hmm. you can attack one, two spaces away. You can attack one, two, three spaces away. You can attack one, two, that's obviously in its regular range, but any space within three. So you can just imagine here with me, uh, there's a huge diamond shape around this unit that implies all of its range. So it can go one, two, three spaces away. So uh, as you can see, uh, there's a big diamond shape. Just imagine that shape all the way around this tower, uh, implying all of its effective death range, I guess you would say. It's attack range. Attack range. And also, let's say, for example, I use Grundor's Tower. And another benefit of putting Mortar, aside from the fact that you now have uh, all of this diagonal space, which is within range of this tower now, if you roll two dice, you don't roll poorly like I just rolled, but let's say you rolled a three and a five, um, and uh, Grundor's Tower attacked this Oath Sworn, which is within three spaces of it, uh, you would put two damage on this Oath Sworn, uh, which is an enemy, that would kill the Oath Sworn, and any unit, let's say, let's say unit on each card, yeah, that's a, if you attack a card. So this can work on units, this can work on walls, this can work on summoners, this can work on conjurations. Whenever you destroy a card using the regular attack of this tower, now this card is destroyed, it goes to your magic, and any card next to it orthogonally here, 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 or here gets a wound because... You can essentially think of the mortar landing. Uh, if you know anything about mortar shells, they shoot up into the air, they land on their target, and shrapnel, uh, excess debris and whatnot, fly into the air in the immediate vicinity of the area where the mortar landed. So this architect would get hit for one hit, and as you can see, he has one hit point. He would also die and go to your magic. So uh, you can use this very strategically to eliminate more than one enemy unit at any given time and potentially eliminate one, two, three, four, five units all at once in a very rare instance where you have that many enemy units to kill all at once. But if you kill that unit in the middle, then all the ones around it also are hurt for one damage each. So um, obviously you also have to keep in mind the fact that this can hurt your units as well. So if you had let's say, for example, a friendly architect next to that enemy oath sworn, then that friendly architect would die. It would go to your magic, but it would die. Right. So you have to keep in mind that can hurt your enemy for more than what they were originally expecting, and it can also hurt you. And you just have to calculate that risk and say, okay, well, if I lose that unit, that's not that big a deal. I wanted to kill that unit. Right. So that is an example of Grundor's Tower with the Mortar upgrade. All right, so then we're going to go on to the next upgrade, which mm -hmm. is the turret upgrade. Mm -hmm. Upgrade a unit with the built special ability with this special ability. Gyro Stabilizer. When attacking, this unit may attack a card that is up to two clear diagonal line spaces away. Once per turn after attacking with this unit, you may spend one magic point to attack with this unit again. So there are kind of two aspects built into this special ability. Mm -hmm. Let's move this one over here. So it gives you the rare ability to do a diagonal attack. That's not very common at all in Summoner Wars. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, from here, you can also see uh, this isn't quite as versatile as um, Mortar because Mortar said within three. So like we said, we could go one, two, three spaces away. But 
um, you can go diagonal twice with this card. So uh, this ranged unit, Grundor's Tower, can shoot one, two spaces away diagonally from his current position. So, and that accounts for all directions. So to the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. And so that is that. But also, like Michelle said, it has two abilities. The second ability is you may pay one magic from your magic pile to attack a second time. Let's say you rolled against this ar architect and you only rolled a one and a two. Now you had the chance to pay one magic and attack that architect again, and then hopefully kill him this turn. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, you attack the architect, you killed him, then you attack this enemy unit over here, for example. I know there's not a unit there. Um, but yeah, basically, you can attack two different cards, you can attack the same card twice to administer damage twice, and obviously it all depends on die rolls, but that is one way to get in more hits at the cost of one magic. All right, so that, those are the two aspects of the turret upgrade. Mm -hmm. Finally, we have the Colossus upgrade. Mm -hmm. Upgrade a unit with the built special ability with this special ability. Mighty Legs. This unit may move even though it has the built special ability. If this unit moves on a turn, it can only attack adjacent cards for the remainder of that turn. This unit may move through common units. Every unit that this unit moves through receives one wound marker. This unit must end its move on an unoccupied space. So, like we said and mentioned briefly before, all of these upgrade cards can be applied to any card that has a built special ability. So for just simplification purposes, if it has tower in the name, it usually has the built special ability. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use the assault tower for this example, although you could use it with Grundor's tower. Mm -hmm. So several aspects to this. They essentially gain the ability to walk. That's why it's called Mighty Legs. So, um, and when they walk, they can run over, essentially trample, common units. Not champions, just commons, and also not any other type of unit, conjurations, summoners, etc. Mm -hmm. So, this Assault Tower with the Colossus upgrade... It's going to fight me on this, I know it. Okay, there. Not too bad. Okay, so, with the Colossus upgrade, this unit that normally cannot move at all can now move two spaces as any normal unit would on a normal turn. So it can go here to go on top of this common unit that is an enemy and then go here. Or for example, go here and then here. And whenever that happens to a common unit, because it only works on commons, they receive a wound. Uh, just like elephants and other trample ability units in other decks, you can essentially trample that common unit using the Colossus special ability. And one other limitation, because this unit is obviously ranged and could theoretically go here and then here and then shoot at a distance. One disadvantage of the fact that you can trample people with this tower is the fact that you can only now, after moving this turn, shoot uh, units that are adjacent to you. Right, so you're sacrificing being able to do a ranged attack once you move on that same turn. But obviously, you get the benefit of, well, if you just trampled somebody, obviously you can shoot that person because you're immediately next to that unit you trampled. Right. Although, if you killed them with your trampling, then yes, then they're dead. And you yeah, they're, shoot anybody. they're there to attack anymore. Yeah, so you'd have to plan your movement such that... Um, if you are going to attack with that same tower, you want to have somebody next to it. So that way you can tramp, uh, trample them and attack them, for example, in this example, or trample them and then attack somebody that is right here, for example. Oops, knocked the card over. <laughs> right. So that is an example of using the Colossus upgrade and all of its special abilities. I don't believe we missed anything on there. And yeah, of course, whenever you trample people, you can't end your turn on top of somebody that would be inhumane. You'd have to uh, basically move on to an empty space in order for it to count as a valid use of the Colossus upgrade. So if you trampled if you trampled a unit and it died because it only had because it only had one hit point, so you gave it one wound and that caused it to be out of the game, mm -hmm. then it's that unit is considered to be destroyed and it would go to your magic pile. For example, if you trampled this architect which only had one hit point, then after you stepped on it, 
with the Colossus upgrade card. I put it away already. But if you had the Colossus upgrade card, you pick it up, you put it on top of this, then you move it over here. This unit would die because it was destroyed by you, by your action, and it would go immediately into your magic pile. Mm -hmm. So those were all three upgrades that can make your Assault Towers and Grundor's Tower awesome and scary for your mm -hmm. opponent's army. So let's go ahead and move on to the next card. Okay, so now we're just going to be talking about some regular event cards. Mm -hmm. These is... are not specifically for towers. Right. So this is called Destabilize. Place four wound markers on each wall that is on the battlefield. So the important thing to remember about this is it applies to your own walls and your opponent's walls. Boom, boom. So you get to put four wounds on your opponent's walls, but you also have to do it to your walls. But you do have architects that are able to repair walls, as we talked about in the previous video. So if you uh, uh, want to heal your own walls, you can exchange one of your three regular attacks, use this architect, and remove one of the one that you just caused with Destabilize. So that is a possibility, but you do have to work at healing your walls of the damage that was done by Destabilize. But for example, if your opponent has two walls and you only have one on the field currently, that would possibly be a good time to consider doing this card. And to mitigate that, you can use your Architect to remove one damage. Mm -hmm. So, um, and obviously you want to be careful uh, using this card, Destabilize, if you're planning on using Bulvi's special ability anytime soon, right. because he goes ahead and adds another wound back to the walls, and that is not optional. If you are going to use Bulvi's Strength of Stone, you have to place a wound on every one of your walls, and you get one die for each uh, wound that you put on. Right. We went over that in part one of our second summoner guild door videos. Mm -hmm. There Let's go on to the next card. Okay, this is Accelerated Construction. Search your draw pile for an event, wall, or a unit card with the built special ability. Reveal the card, then place the card in your hand and shuffle your draw pile. You may summon units with the built special ability during this event phase. So this card gives you quite a few options of what you can find in your draw pile. So you look through your draw pile, and then you either take an event, or you take a wall, or you take a unit with the built special ability, which in, which normally would mean a tower. So it gives you quite a few options, and then once you take the card, you do have to reveal it, so that means you show your opponent what card you took out of your deck, and then you put the card in your hand, and then you shuffle your draw pile, because of course, otherwise you would have seen everything that you could know about your draw pile, so you shuffle it so that you don't know the order anymore. Mm -hmm. And then after you've done this, you're able to summon units with the built special ability during this event phase. So that could mean a card you just got out of your draw pile, or it could mean any other card that's in your hand that has the built special ability and you are prepared to summon during this event phase. So um, basically, uh, this a card has a lot of possibilities that you can use it for. Um, you could use it to search for Destabilize to... Uh, immediately use against your enemy. Uh, there uh, really are a great variety of options for you to use this for. So one thing you really want to remember very carefully is you can summon units any towers because they have the built special ability on the same uh, event phase that you use accelerated construction. So you could deal a one-two punch to your enemy in terms of okay, I'm going to use this Accelerated Construction card during my event phase to get, let us say, the Mortar Upgrade. And you reveal that to your opponent. I am going to grab the Mortar Upgrade from my draw pile. You put that back into your hand. Now, you can summon towers this turn. So let's say I summon this Assault Tower right here next to my wall. So that's not illegal because... Uh, the Accelerated Construction card says I can summon built units. And I can use that same mortar upgrade that I just grabbed and put it underneath that Assault Tower. Mm -hmm. So those are all legal moves. I said legal, not illegal. Mm -hmm. But those are all legal moves that you can do in the same event phase. Even though you just did summoning during that event phase, this card says it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Even though you grabbed that card just now, you can still play it this turn because it's still your event phase. And yeah, so you can immediately summon onto the board uh, something that your opponent wasn't expecting at all. And also remember, you can summon towers next to architects as well. So you can really throw that out there. If for some reason your opponent 
didn't attack the architect or wasn't successful in attacking the architect, um, you can get a tower into a very good crucial uh, strategic position at any given time using this accelerated construction card. And as you can see, that is completely an apt name for this card because like I just said in that example, you can do a lot with this one card in one turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, next All card. Right. Then we have strength and structures. Until the beginning of your next turn, when an enemy unit rolls to attack a wall that you control, or a unit you control that has the built special ability, those cards only receive wound markers from die results of five or higher during that attack. So for for one whole turn, up until your next turn, mm -hmm. whenever your wall is attacked or a tower is attacked, um, your opponent has to roll a five or higher in order to succeed. So normally a three or higher would work, but in this case, they would have to get five or higher. So it just makes it that much harder for them to do damage to anything that is considered to be built, whether a wall or a tower. Yeah. Wall, tower, tower. So, yeah, this applies to all three of those. It doesn't apply to any of your other units. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have two copies of this to use during the game. Right. And then we have expand, and there are two copies of this mm -hmm. in the deck as well. Mm -hmm. Summon a common unit from your hand that has the built special ability without paying its summon cost. You may place the unit adjacent to any other unit you control that also has the built special ability. So this is pretty unique because you don't have to pay in order to summon this tower. Assault tower, and that is mm -hmm. all. It does not work on Grundor's tower because he is not a champ. Uh, he is a champion. He is not a common. This only works for commons because I I made that mistake when I played with this deck the first or the second time that I played with it, I thought, oh, I can summon Grundor's Tower for free, but it's a champion. It's not a common. Yeah, that would be unfair. So, um, but this is pretty awesome. During your event phase, you to break the rules again. You can summon an Assault Tower during your event phase and not pay for it, which is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Free to magic to get that onto the board. And also... Uh, like we said, you can normally place towers next to walls, right here, next to architects, so wherever the architect is, you can put them adjacent to an architect. But this card, because uh, it expands your opportunities, basically, <laughs> you can place that unit, that assault tower, only assault towers, uh, that you currently have in hand. You have to have it in your hand. You can't draw it from your deck. It has to be currently in your hand. You may place that unit adjacent to any other unit you control that also has the built special ability. So let's say Grundor's tower is here because on a previous turn I had an architect to build it right there. Then uh, another option besides next to a wall and next to an architect, I can summon this next to Grundor's tower to complete the bombardment of the enemy side of the board. <laughs> so right. those were all the event cards and the three upgrade cards from the Summoner Wars Guild Dwarf Second Summoner set. We hope that clarifies up any confusion that you guys had about any of those cards. Uh, we appreciate any and all feedback, uh, comments, likes, subscriptions to our channel on the Board Game Tutors on YouTube. Uh, please check us out on the BoardGameGeek.com website. We have plenty of videos that we've linked onto that website. And yeah, if you enjoyed any or any anything from this video or any of our other videos, um, please uh, subscribe to our channel. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.